Thank you for joining me today for this webinar. I'm Amy Enright, Director of Certification at Child Life Council. I'll be talking about the recertification changes that were adopted in January of 2015. This webinar is intended as an informational session to help CCLSs understand the changes to the recertification program, and it does not count toward PDUs. Probably the first question on everyone's mind is, how does this affect me? Basically, everyone falls into one of two categories based on the date you became certified or the last time you recertified. Group 1 consists of those who are currently certified, including the people who need to recertify in 2015, but it does not include those who passed the exam in 2015. Group 1 gets to finish their current certification cycle under the old rules. This was the contract, if you will, that we made with you when you became certified. When you recertify, you'll start a new cycle and we'll have a new contract that follows the new rules. Group 2 consists of those who become certified and those who successfully recertify in 2015 or later. This includes those CCLSs who passed the exam in 2015. The first of these two groups is much larger, so I will address them first. If you were certified before 2015, for your current certification cycle, you're not required to have PDUs from each of the three domains. You're required to have 50 PDUs, and they can come from any of the domains on the exam content outline. In subsequent certification cycles, however, you'll be required to have 60 PDUs with some from each domain. For Group 2, those certified in 2015 or later, you're required to have 60 PDUs with some from each domain for your current certification cycle. Because we have new activity types that are not based on clock hours, the unit of measure for professional development has changed from professional development hours, or PDHs, to professional development units, or PDUs. Different activity types earn a different corresponding number of PDUs, which I'll talk about more in a few minutes. It's important to note that PDUs can only be earned in half-hour increments, and they're rounded down to the nearest half-hour. 0.5 PDU is the smallest possible increment. So if you attend a 20-minute training session, you cannot earn PDUs for the session. If you attend a 45-minute session, you earn 0.5 PDU. And an hour and 15-minute session will get you one PDU. Again, if you were certified or recertified prior to 2015, you're only required to have 50 PDUs for this certification cycle. In your next cycle, or if you certify or recertify in 2015, you're required to have 60 PDUs. With the new activity types that are available, it shouldn't be too difficult to accrue an average of one PDU per month. The exam content outline lists the topics that are on the certification exam. And through recertification, we need to document that CCLSs have demonstrated learning that's equivalent to the knowledge at the onset of certification. Therefore, going forward, CCLSs will be required to earn PDUs in each of the three domains. If you certify or recertify in 2015 or later, the domain requirements are as follows. For Domain 1, Professional Responsibility, a total of 15 PDUs are required, with a minimum of 5 of the 15 related to professional ethics. For Domain 2, Assessment, 20 PDUs are required. And for Domain 3, Intervention, a minimum of 15 PDUs is required. That leaves 10 PDUs that are left to the discretion of the CCLS. As I said, a minimum of 5 PDUs must be related to ethics. This is the first task in the Professional Responsibility domain. Again, 15 PDUs must come from this domain. Within that 15, at least 5 must be related to professional ethics. Along with the changes to the number of PDUs required, new activity types will now be accepted. Along with traditional professional development, which includes conference sessions, college classes, and webinars, the certifying committee has added the following activities. Independent study, presenting, internship supervision, publishing, and professional service. 
and everyone, both groups 1 and 2, can use the new activity types right away. These are effective for activities completed after January 1, 2015. In a moment I'll be talking about the appropriate documentation and how to calculate PDUs for each of the activities. There are also limits to some activities that I'll discuss as well. Right now let me talk a little bit about what is not acceptable for PDUs. First and foremost, all sessions have to be related to the exam content outline. The point of recertification is to show that you've retained or improved on the knowledge you showed when you passed the certification exam. So activities without that connection do not count as PDUs. Other activities that don't count include patient care and other employment duties, such as academic instruction, academic courses that are not taken for college credit, mission or service trips, networking sessions, meetings, hospital tours, internships, and fellowships, in services that are required by your employer, any session time that's devoted to organizational business, entertainment, or social activities, including meal breaks, travel time, blog postings, and journal clubs. We've had the same deadline to apply for recertification through professional development for many years. The certifying committee has decided to extend that to October 31st. This applies to all CCLSs. No applications will be accepted after October 31st, but this will give you four additional months to apply. With regards to documentation, there are a few critical things to remember. If your application is selected for the random audit, you may be asked to submit documentation of each of the PDUs you listed on your application. What the auditors are looking for is proof of your participation. This doesn't include flyers or advertisements or registration documents because these don't show that you attended the session. I'll go into greater detail for each activity type, but it includes things like certificates of completion which show that you participated in the session. Every activity type has at least one acceptable form of documentation. Let's start to talk about the activity types that are accepted for recertification. When you're looking at traditional professional development like college classes, in-services, webinars, and conference attendance, here are some of the types of sessions that are accepted. Seminars, workshops, conference breakout sessions, keynote addresses, plenaries, opening and closing sessions, and intensives. Employer-based learning, which includes in-services and grand rounds, webinars, web conferences, and live webcasts. Please keep in mind that recorded sessions are only accepted if there's a quiz or test, and also that online sessions are only accepted if there's an interactive component or if there's a quiz or test. Some things that are not accepted. Non-credit or audited classes, networking sessions, meetings, time during sessions that's spent on business, entertainment, or socializing, tours, travel time, mandatory trainings that your employer requires, and recorded sessions that don't have a quiz. To calculate the number of PDUs that you earn, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. For each hour of educational content, you earn one PDU. The only exception to this is for college classes. For those, it's based on the number of college credits you earn for the class. Each credit is equal to three PDUs. So many university classes are worth three credit hours. This would be equivalent to nine PDUs. There's no maximum number of PDUs that you can earn through traditional professional development activities. For documentation, there's a few options. Certificates of completion. For CLC conferences, the certificate of attendance can be found on the preceding CD that's distributed with the conference tote bags. And for sites that offer literature review, there's usually a certificate that can be printed once the quiz is completed successfully. You can also use the PDU verification form from the organization sponsoring the event or from your employer. This is a new form that's available in the recertification manual on the CLC website. And for college classes, a university transcript is the required documentation. Moving on to the independent learning category. There are companies that create multimedia packages designed for independent learning. 
These can count provided there's some assessment of learning, such as a quiz, test, or a graded writing project. Likewise, video or internet-based self-study courses can be counted provided there's a post-completion assessment. This includes sites that allow you to review journal articles and complete a quiz at the end. The key to this activity type is the quiz. If there's no test of your knowledge, it cannot be counted for PDUs. It has to have a quiz or a test. To calculate the number of PDUs for independent learning, one quiz or test is equal to one PDU. Keep in mind that there's a limit of 10 PDUs that can be earned this way during the five-year certification cycle. For documentation, you'd be required to present whatever document the sponsoring organization provides that shows the successful completion of the quiz. The next activity type is field work supervision. Those who provide direct supervision to interns can earn PDUs that way. Several people have asked about the relationship to the exam content outline. The hours in this activity type are most closely aligned with Domain 1, Professional Responsibility. An important thing to remember about intern supervision is that if you're acting in the capacity of the internship coordinator, you cannot count those hours for PDUs. Only the direct supervisor of the intern can earn PDUs. Also, if you're supervising a fellowship or practicum, you can't count PDUs for that. To calculate the number of PDUs, 80 hours of supervision equals 2 PDUs. And there's a maximum of 10 PDUs for each certification cycle. The PDU verification form completed by your employer is the required documentation for internship supervision. Again, this is available on the website in the recertification manual. We had a lot of feedback about the next activity type. In response, the certifying committee is now accepting presenting as a valid activity for PDUs. In addition to conference type presentations, this can include speeches for local organizations, in services or other instructions for child life specialists or other professionals in the workplace, poster sessions at a conference, journal article review or patient case study presentations. It's important to note a few things. Regardless of how many times you make a presentation, you can only earn credit for one of those times. And hours spent preparing the presentation do not count toward PDUs, nor do those spent preparing or teaching college classes. To calculate the number of PDUs, there are a few formulas. Which one you use will be determined by the type of presentation and the venue where it's given. If you're presenting at a state, national, or international conference, a one-hour presentation is worth two PDUs. If you're speaking to a local group or association, you earn one PDU for each hour of the presentation. The latter is the formula you'd use for in-services. Presenting an article review or case presentation for your colleagues is equivalent to one PDU, regardless of the length. A poster presentation will earn you a minimum of two PDUs. If there's a period of time when you staff the poster to discuss it, you earn one PDU for each hour of staff time, but never less than two PDUs. So if the poster staffed for three hours, you'd earn three PDUs. If the poster staffed for 30 minutes, you'd still accrue two PDUs because the poster is never worth less than two PDUs. There's a maximum of 20 PDUs that can be earned through presenting in the five-year certification cycle. For documentation, you'll need to show a copy of the presentation or the program announcement that lists the presenter's name, the date, length, and location of the presentation, and a contact person at the sponsoring organization. Other types of acceptable documentation include a copy of the attendance sheet and an outline of the presentation, or the PDU verification form. Moving on to publishing. This is pretty straightforward. A focus article for the CLC Bulletin, an article in a peer-reviewed journal, or a book or chapter on topics related to child life earn three PDUs. Again, pretty simple calculation. One article or one chapter is equivalent to three PDUs. I've been asked if I were to write a book with multiple chapters, how do I calculate the PDUs? If you write a book with two chapters, you earn six PDUs. 
three chapters, nine PDUs, and so on. For documentation of your publishing efforts, a copy of the printed article, the title page, or table of contents of a book are all acceptable. And finally, the last activity type, professional service. This encompasses both research and committee service. This can be a CLC committee or one for another group that's related to the psychosocial care of children. Serving on the board of directors, a committee, or task force counts, but working groups do not count for PDUs. To calculate the number of PDUs for professional service, one research project is equivalent to two PDUs. And for committee service, one year is equal to one PDU. There's no limit on the number of PDUs that you can earn for research studies, but there is a maximum of five PDUs per certification cycle for each type of committee service. This means you can earn up to five PDUs for participation on a CLC committee and another five PDUs for participation on a non-CLC committee. A copy of the research summary or conclusion is appropriate documentation, or the CLC committee roster, or for other organizations verification from their board. Next I want to give answers to some frequently asked questions. Does the presentation I gave last year count? This really pertains to all the activity types except for traditional professional development. Anything that occurred prior to January 1st, 2015 does not count. That's the date these changes went into effect. So the new activity types, presenting, publishing, so on, only started to count in 2015. The next question is, when is a quiz required? Any independent learning requires a quiz and so do recorded sessions. Without a post-assessment, you can't claim PDUs for these activities. Again, that's independent learning and recorded sessions. People commonly ask whether they can get credit if they do a presentation multiple times. You can only earn PDUs for one instance of any given presentation, even if you give it five times or once a year. I'm also often asked if posting a blog or participating in journal clubs count, and they do not. If you have more than enough PDUs in one cycle, you cannot carry them over to the next cycle. The next question, did I do something wrong to be selected for the audit? I want to stress that being selected for the audit is not an indication that there is suspicion about an application or its contents. The audit is random and completely computer generated. Another point I want to really stress as these are the most frequently asked questions. The start date of your certification cycle determines which rules you'll need to follow for recertification through PDUs. If you certify or recertify in 2015 or later, you follow the new rules, 60 PDUs with some in each of the domains. If you certified or recertified prior to 2015, you follow the old rules for this certification cycle, 50 PDUs in any of the three domains then the next time you recertify, you'll have to follow the new requirements. That concludes this presentation. If you still have questions, please contact us at certification at childlife.org. Thanks so much for your time.